Hello my friends and welcome to Freedom Forest. If it's your first time joining us, then we are three acres of agroforestry, permaculture, land in the southeast of England, zone 9A. Our food forest has been full of beautiful blossom over the last few weeks. So we thought we would take you for a little spring update tour and show you how everything's looking. Let's do it. So our food forest is going into its third growing season now and it's been really lovely already this year to see the leaves coming out on all of the trees this spring and actually to start to see how our canopies are filling out and beginning to come together on some of the first trees that we added to the food forest um, and we're really starting to notice the growth on them this year so that's really really exciting. And another thing that we are really pleased about um, right now is our ground cover of strawberries, which you can probably see all around me here. Um, this is one of the biggest patches that we've got. And it just looks absolutely stunning going right up under all the trees. And the flowers on some of these strawberries are absolutely ginormous. So we are really praying for a bumper crop of strawberries this summer. Two winters ago, I started transplanting some of the strawberry runners from our main strawberry bed up in our growing area. And I probably transplanted a hundred or so runners into various spots of the food forest. But as you can see now, they are really beginning to take hold and they just love rooting directly into the wood chip ground cover that we've got here. And we've also got several different types of strawberries, um, not only varieties. Our main um, kind of understory of evergreen ground cover are Albion strawberries, but we also have these woodland strawberries here which are now beginning to self-seed themselves. They don't tend to run so much like traditional strawberries, but they're smaller and I actually really like the taste of them. So we are the beginning of May now, the 6th of May today, and all of the currants have been flowering and are absolutely covered in young fruit just forming up. These are black currant bushes here. We've got black currants, red currants, and white currants in the food forest, but the black currants so far have definitely been the best producers and they are definitely my favourites at the moment and I know a lot of people seem to prefer the white currants and I really hope that we get some good flavours and yields from our red currants going forward because I just love having that colour but at the minute I'm not such a fan of the white currants um, they're really tart and, and bitter and almost dry here, so we don't know what, what's causing that. We've had um, quite a lot of feedback as to um, possibilities, but yeah, we're, we're, we've kept one or two in the food forest, but um, for the minute, we're mainly focusing on the black currants. We've got lots of beautiful borage that's been flowering under this apple tree here. Um, and I know a lot of people tend to go for the Bokkim 14 variety of comfrey, which doesn't actually um, seed. And when I first transplanted this comfrey into here, I wasn't sure what variety I had, um, but it is definitely the seeding variety. And I'm really happy about that because I would love for the comfrey to spread far and wide throughout the food forest because it has so many benefits. The bees love it, we use it for chop and drop. Um, you can even wrap your potatoes in it and plant your potatoes in a comfrey leaf uh, to give them a really good boost of feed. One of the things how we're going to hopefully manage the raspberries this year is 
um, by just using, um, just cutting, cutting paths through either with a strimmer or a machete. And so I started doing that yesterday um, and then it was really hard to try not to strim too many of the heads off the strawberries as well, but still start to create some pathways. So yeah, I was working on that yesterday. So we might be able to pick our way through here a little bit better. This strip here, we've got a few um, blueberry bushes all around this area here. And the blueberries are doing really, really well. They're coming on beautifully. And again, as with most years so far, even though, like I say, this is only our third growing season, we have got really good fruits forming on there. But unfortunately, we do have to be really quick because the birds love to get to the blueberries before we do. Um, but maybe we'll try netting one or two of the bushes this year so we can all get our fair share. So although the total area of Freedom Forest is three acres, we actually have what we describe as our food forest as kind of a sectioned off area, which is around about approximately 25 metres by about 20 metres. So it's not that much bigger than kind of a suburban garden, which is quite nice to show what could be possible in that kind of setting. Now, if you'd like to follow me, we'll have a little look down here. Um, one of the plants you might be able to see all around me here with these almost dandelion seed heads is a plant called colt's foot and I introduced it, it's a medicinal herb and what's interesting about it is it used to be one of the traditional tobacco plants of the United Kingdom before the Asian tobacco was introduced and I didn't actually realise it spreads this erratically actually. I'd only found it in two places in this area and I thought it'd be nice to bring a bit of rhizome over but it's actually spread in a couple of years probably 10-15 meters in each direction so we may have to try and do a little bit to control this in the future but it's just a nice interesting uh, ground cover to have in this area. And we've introduced a few trees this year as well um, if you've watched any of our previous tour videos, you know that we did lose a few and we've actually, um, by choice, uh, decided to change a few that we were having um, just no luck with really. So um, they're in, they're starting to establish here. This is a nice plum. This is going to be very interesting. This beside me here is a honeyberry bush and we've yet to have fruit of these, but they're apparently quite tasty, so it will be interesting to see the results of those. This year may hopefully be the first year. And beside me here as well, we've got a lovely blueberry, and really, although we've had a lot of fruit production on these over the last few years, we've yet to actually be able to eat a single fruit because the entire lot gets stripped off by birds pretty much the day they're ripe. <laughs> Over here is one that I'm very interested in though because I'm a, a real lover and passionate person about evergreen plants and shrubs and this is a type of blueberry called pink lemonade and the blueberries are actually pink on this but very interestingly here it actually remains evergreen and it has slightly different leaves to the other types of blueberries as well. So this is one of our red currant bushes and they are noticeably smaller than our black currant bushes but this is the first year that they look to be forming up a real load of fruit um, so if they are a little bit too tart for normal eating um, hopefully if we can get a good harvest this year then I will look at using them for um, preserves and jams and jellies uh, so I'm really excited to be working with them because they have such a beautiful deep red colour. Another thing we're really excited about, we're, we're really excited about a lot of things you'll probably realise, is our cherry plum trees. Uh, they had really, really good blossom on this year. So we're hoping that we'll get a few more cherry plums this year. Uh, the trees grow like crazy, so it's starting to create a really good 
canopy layer for us. And like I was just saying earlier, this particular patch here with the strawberries between this cherry tree and this cherry plum, it just, this is our vision for the whole of our food forest going forward. So this is what we would like to spread throughout the whole of this area if possible. This is one of our cherry trees and we've got quite a nice lot forming up this year actually and this is our first year where a lot of our more mature trees are really starting to produce a decent amount. So beneath our cherry tree here we have another plant which is related to the comfrey which is called green alkinet and this one gets a bit of a hard time because it's seen as a bit of a vigorous invasive uh, weed but um, it really is quite identical in a lot of ways to comfrey and I would make a good bet that it also is a mineral accumulator as well and it's also got lovely uh, blue flowers which attract a lot of insects and you're starting to see here the establishment of the floor of our feed forest and this is really what we're looking for instead of just bare ground or bare wood chips we really want the plants to fill in so we're not having to continually come in here and interfere in weed and just here's an example of how we've got some gooseberries we've got our green alkanet below those we've got our strawberries and then we've got our canopy of our cherry tree above and it's really nice to see after quite a short time actually just a few years how we're now starting to get this canopy um, with our fruiting shrubs underneath and it's only going to be another couple of years until our canopies are almost touching and we can prune them with just small gaps in between and raise the crowns of these slightly so we can walk around and it really will be beautiful to see that kind of establishment. Here's another of our beautiful apple trees and we've got numerous apple varieties here and we made sure they were all pollination partners and early, medium and late season varieties so it covers kind of longest fruiting season as possible. And we've had a ton of blossom this year which has been such a beautiful sight to see. And we've also had some visitors in the form of these black beetles this year which have been having a nibble on our fresh foliage um, but they seem to be leaving the flowers mostly unaffected so hopefully they're not going to have too much of an impact. So we started off having a bit of a herb area over in the back corner of the food forest um, but this apple mint is wanting to spread itself all over the place and is migrating to various patches of the food forest and indeed other areas of the land we keep finding it and we're quite happy about that for now again it creates a lovely ground cover and um, all the insects love it and we love eating mint in salads and drinks and in loads of different ways and in teas as well so at the moment I'm happy to have lots of mint so that's spreading really nicely throughout the food forest where everything's still young and developing here we are happy just to kind of let things be as much as we can and only intervene with stuff when we really have to and then over time hopefully everything will find its balance and we can work out where things need to be a lot more. Another thing I was doing in here yesterday is we were just gifted some really big clumps of Solomon seal which is something that I have um, been after for the food forest for quite a long time so I've been starting to transplant um, some of the Solomon seal roots and you may wonder why Solomon seal um, has its place in the food forest and my longer term plan for that and also for the Shazandra vines that were growing up our apricot trees over here is because over time I would like to learn about how to make tinctures um, to use for herbal medicine and we're trying to incorporate as many perennial vegetables into the food forest system that we have here as well as the main fruit and nut trees 
And so we've got um, a small bed of asparagus down here, which has um, obviously only been in for a couple of years. Uh, but again, we were gifted uh, a big clump of asparagus, uh, which I've popped down over here just yesterday. So we're hoping to, over time, be able to um, have more areas of things like asparagus uh, throughout the food forest as well as it takes shape and we can work out what things suit where. Um, I know it's not the best time to be transplanting things like asparagus or the Solomon seal, but that's just when it's um, been with us. So we're just going to make the most of that and uh, try and look after it and give it the best chance possible. So this is our full sun area coming through this bit. And again, as the season progresses, we will have a lot more going on in here. We usually plant a bit of an overflow of things like courgettes and stuff like that as well. We've got some chives down here and lots of herbs and beautiful flowers. And then I've also um, been planting out some perennial kales. We've got some Taunton Dean perennial kale here and another one over there. These I've grown from cuttings that I've taken from our main uh, Taunton Dean plants that I've got in our Baraska net house. So really pleased with how easy it is to take cuttings of those. Um, so that's going to be something that I'm just kind of constantly dotting around throughout the food forest um, as it takes shape. So we've got another big patch of mint here and I actually discovered today that there's two different varieties in here. I think we've got a, what I call a common mint there and then this slightly darker patch is a chocolate mint. Um, it is also covered in rather a lot of brambles so we need to get in there and give it a little bit of a helping hand um, to keep some of that bramble under control. Oh and here we've got our rhubarb. And we've actually got two different um, crowns of rhubarb here. And the one on the right, we've been harvesting some beautiful rhubarb from already. Uh, but this one on the left always just seems to um, want to produce these lovely flower heads. So um, it's probably getting a bit old or something like that. I, I don't know a huge amount about rhubarb. So if any of you out there can um, give us some info as to why this is happening, then we would love to know more about that. But I suspect, because again, that was a plant that was given to us, that it is just an older crown of rhubarb and maybe we need to divide it up a little bit. So as soon as I get a chance, um, perhaps we'll try that. But we'd like to spread the rhubarb again, maybe a little bit more here and throughout other areas of the food forest because it is another brilliant perennial vegetable. And we've also had a couple of new tree additions over the winter. And one of the additions that, as always, we're really excited about is this beautiful mulberry tree here. Um, we just yesterday had to put some tree protectors on it because when I came into the food forest yesterday morning, I heard um, a big rustle and we actually had a deer in here. Um, she's able to jump over or through the fences. Um, and some of our younger trees had had some of the lower branches damaged by the deer. So um, yeah, so all the new trees, we've now gone round and put tree protectors on to um, help them just in case our beautiful deer comes back in again. Um, but yeah, this mulberry tree, apparently it's a really special variety. Um, Dan did a lot of research before he bought this one for me as a Christmas present, uh, but he knows more about it than I do. So maybe I'll let Dan explain more about this one. So this mulberry is very exciting. It's called Illinois Everbearing, and it's actually a hybrid between the uh, North American mulberry and the European mulberry. And it's supposed to have very nice big fruits. So we're very excited about this one. So this perennial cornflower, as we know it, is absolutely stunning with its almost neon purple flowers. And we find it repeats flowers here throughout the season. And I actually dug one of these up from one of my gardening clients' gardens, and it started to now reproduce itself throughout the food forest. And it's a very welcome introduction here. You may have noticed as well, we still have a lot of sheep sorrel and bramble around the place growing 
and we're hoping over time some of the other competing ground cover plants will start to swamp these. Um, when we have time we do come in and control some of it but the sheep sorrel is edible and it's actually a nitrogen fixer as well and the bramble of course if left does produce some beautiful blackberries so for the meantime we'll let things find its balance. Under our apricot trees we've got our shizandra vines growing um, and shizandra is a climbing vine which is native to China and as I mentioned earlier I'm hoping to use those um, berries when they eventually form for things like herbal teas and hopefully to make my own tinctures. Uh, another thing I've been busily doing over the last few weeks is um, underplanting some of the fruit trees with things like um, rainbow chard and um, spinach and also these perennial um, Welsh red onions so I'm looking forward to seeing how those things take hold in the food forest as well. I've been dotting some more annual herbs throughout the food forest as well and I've underplanted some of the trees with uh, chervil and dill and hopefully some of these, particularly things like the dill, will just self-seed and then regenerate throughout the food forest wherever they would like to be. And we've got a couple of perhaps less or more uncommon uh, flowering shrubs for the UK, berry bushes, and these are aronia. And these are beautiful because they have these lovely uh, profusion of flowers and evergreen foliage as well. And these also are hopefully going to be our first season of quite good production of these berries as well. So as we enter our third growing season, we're really excited as always to see how our food forest takes shape this year because it's amazing just in the short life of this food forest already how much it changes each season and also how much we learn about this space and about the plants just by observing um, how they behave. Yeah, and it really is a world of learning and it's so exciting every time we come in here to see different insects and see how the different plants are interacting with each other. Yeah. And we really hope you've enjoyed having a look around today. We will definitely try and do um, more update tours as the season progresses and we're starting to get more and more production in here. And yes, we'd like to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already and please click the like button below the video if you've enjoyed watching us today. And don't forget to share the videos on your social media and with your friends that you know will enjoy this kind of thing because it really helps us to get our content out there and being viewed and shared with more beautiful people just like you. So thanks for being with us today. Peace, Peace and plants. plants.